Welcome to the Data Classifications module. In this module, you will learn about the different types of identifiers, keywords and character sets used in C language. You will also learn about the different data types available in C language along with the format specifiers. Also, you will learn about variables, constants and storage classes. A character set is a set of alphabets, numbers, special characters, and spaces that are used to represent information. The character set for C language is shown on the screen. A token represents individual words, numbers or punctuation marks. The C programming language has six tokens that are put up on the screen. To refer to any variables, functions, or constants in the program, you need to assign an identifier to it. You can use any character, from the defined character set of the C language. You need to follow certain rules, to define identifiers. Always start an identifier, with an alphabet or underscore. The identifier should contain alphabets, digits, and underscore. Do not include any white space within the identifier, and do not use the keywords as identifiers. Some examples and non-examples of the identifiers are shown on the screen. Keywords are the terms that are already defined in the C compiler. These are also known as reserved words. As a good practice, do not use keywords as variable name or identifier. There are 32 keywords in C language. These keywords are shown on the screen. While writing complex programs, it is a good practice to insert comments indicating the purpose of the program. This will help you to analyze your code at a later stage. You can add any number of comments in a program. Note that the comments are not executed as the program code. These are inserted only for reference. There are two types of comments, single line, and multi line. The syntax for each is shown on the screen. There are three main types of data sets in C language, primary, derived and user defined. Primary data types are the most common, and fundamental data types, for all programming languages. This data type represents numbers, and characters. The derived data types are obtained from primary data types and the user-defined data types are defined by the programmer. In addition to this, for the programs that needs a data type for representing no values, you can use the void data type. It is mainly used in functions and pointers that do not return any value. You have seen different data types in the C language. To display these data types appropriately on the screen, you need the format specifiers. Format specifiers describe the different types of data, which is to be printed on the standard output, or to be entered through the standard input. To define format specifiers, you need to use the special symbol percentage. The format specifiers supported by the C language, are shown on the screen. Now, let's learn about variables. Variables contain values that are not fixed and change regularly. A variable can be considered as a name given to the location in the memory where the constant is stored. In any programming language, the types of variables that it can support depends upon the types of constants that it can handle. At a time, one variable can hold one constant only. You can place variables inside functions, outside functions, and even in the definition of the function parameters. These variables are called, local variables, global variables, and formal parameters, respectively. Next, let us see how to assign values to variables. Since you can include many variables, in a single program, it is very important to name the variables appropriately. This will help you identify the correct variable during each stage of programming. 
you can include letters, numbers and the underscore character in variable names. Keep these points in mind while naming a variable. Always start a variable name, with an alphabet or underscore. Keep the length of the name, to maximum 8 characters. Do not include white spaces, in the variable name. Never use keywords, as variable names. Note that the C language is case sensitive. So, remember the casing that you are using for your variables. Some examples, and non-examples, of variable names are listed on the screen. A variable can store any value including numeric, or string. So, once you name a variable in your program, you need to specify the type of values, it will take during the execution of the program. Note that any variable used in the program, must be declared before using it. The syntax for declaring a variable is shown on the screen. Also, you need to use a specified format, for declaring the variables like integer, float, long integer or character. Some examples for declaring different types of variables are shown on the screen. Once you declare the type of value, the variable will contain, you need to specify the range, of the values the variable can take during program execution. While defining the range, remember the type that you have specified for the variable. That is, if you have declared the variable as integer, you can assign only integer values to it. You cannot assign decimal or character values to it. Use the equal to operator for assigning values to variables. The syntax for assigning values to variables is shown on the screen. You can assign the values to a variable, when you are declaring it, or even after declaring it in the program. Some examples of variable assignment are shown on the screen. You have seen that a variable is a quantity, that changes during the program execution. Unlike variables, constant is a quantity, that does not change throughout the program execution. There are two types of constants, primary constants, and secondary constants. The flowchart, on the screen, describes the classification of the primary and secondary constants. You need to follow the similar rules as the variable, for naming, declaring, and assigning a value to the constants. Let us see this in detail ahead. Recall the rules for naming the variables. You need to follow the same rules for naming the constants as well. Once you name the constant, you need to declare the type of value, it will contain, and then assign a value to it. Programming languages use the preprocessor directives, and keywords for declaring a constant. For declaring a constant, the const keyword is used. The syntax for declaring a constant, is shown on the screen. Also, some examples for assigning a value to the constant, are shown on the screen. Sometimes you need to define your own data types, in addition to what are available in the system. Enumerated data types are user-defined data types, that enable a programmer to create custom data types, in C language. It defines a list of keywords, that makes the program more understandable. It contains integral constants. So, you can use integer constants, and write a program, to check colors. The syntax for this is shown on the screen. Note that enumerated data types are created in C using the enum keyword. You have seen how to define variables, in C programming. In addition to the type of the variables, you also need to define, the storage class of the variable. You know that a variable, is the name given to the location in the memory, where the constant is stored. The constant can be stored, in the computer memory or the CPU registers. Storage classes determine the location, where this value can be stored. If the storage class of a variable is not declared, the compiler will assume a storage class, depending on the context, in which the variable is used. Now, 
There are four storage classes in C. The auto storage class is the default storage class for all local variables within the C program. This storage class is always used with functions. The register storage class defines the variables that should be saved in the CPU register instead of the RAM. These variables are quickly accessible. The static storage class instructs the compiler for keeping the local variable in existence throughout the lifetime of the program rather than creating and destroying it every time it is declared. The extern storage class is used for giving reference of a global variable to all the program files. Extern is always used to declare a global variable or function in another file. It is commonly used when two or more files share the same global variables or functions. The summary of the data types in C language has been put on the screen. I will pause for a few seconds to allow you to read it. In the next module, we will learn about the data classification in C language. The summary of the data types in C language has been put on the screen. I will pause for a few seconds to allow you to read it. In the next module, we will learn about the data classification in C language. Thanks for watching the video let us move ahead with next video.